You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. Sweepers were a defining characteristic of many successful teams from the 1960s to the 1980s and beyond. Rugged, positionally astute defenders who patrolled the spaces between their flanking centre-back colleagues and the goalkeeper, intercepting and marshalling or hacking down anyone who got through. The greatest sweepers had, of course, an attacking role too, bringing the ball out and acting as a playmaking defender capable of stepping into midfield. And the greatest, players like Franz Beckenbauer, often also played in midfield. But the more prosaic sweeper was the more commonly found. Tough players like Danny Blint and Jose Luis Brown could play, but in a defence-first era, functionality and positional excellence outweighed very clever passing or ball-carrying. Nonetheless, even with a recent revival of the back three systems that saw sweepers deployed at the centre of three central defenders, the old-fashioned sweeper has died off. But why? Well, the answers point to a series of tactical and other innovations in football. Sweepers inherently enlarge the defending area of the pitch. By hanging back, off the two centre-backs with man-marking duties, the sweeper added a layer of security, but in doing so, deepened the defensive position of the side. The comprehension of space became a key defensive concept, articulated by the proponents of total football and brought to its zenith by pressing managers like Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp. A sweeper generally acts against this, either hampering it or just being rendered irrelevant by a high defensive line and pressing system. Sweepers could, of course, fulfil more than a defensive function. As a spare man, they could receive possession. The technically capable ones brought the ball out, but even the more rugged, defensively minded operatives could still clear the ball from a relatively unpressured position. This has largely been superseded by player development or tactical innovations. Many top-level centre-backs are now more skilled on the ball. Centre-back pairings often feature one player dropping off quickly in possession to offer a pass. Now, it's not consistent sweeping, but it's similar. Other centre-backs like Harry Maguire or Antonio Rudiger excel at bringing the ball out. And because back three build-up has changed, it's now often the wide centre-backs who progress the ball too with the wing-backs pushing high to act as wingers and the centre-backs offering width in the channels. This reached its zenith with Sheffield United's overlapping centre-backs, but Atalanta and Inter are good examples too. Deep midfielders dropping back, the so-called La Volpe exit, also means that there is a line of ball progression forwards that doesn't require a third centre-back, and perhaps most importantly, goalkeeping has changed too. Many of the functions of a sweeper are now performed by keepers. They can push into a defensive line to offer a passing option, sit off to receive but with the skill to do more than hoof it long, and the best, like Edison or Allison, are comfortable enough in possession to resist a press with their control and quick feet. Crucially, they also sweep but by pushing up, not dropping off. This dovetails with the general need to compress space for possession and pressing teams. It's an active form of front foot defence, not the dropping off and seeding territory that many sweeping systems used. Some teams do still like a deep low block though, dropping off and staying tight. And some of these use a back three but without a sweeper. And this is partly because of offside lines, and with the advent of VAR, the increased importance of pushing the line forwards relative to the opposition, even if the line is deep. It's also because compact blocks often use the sort of 4-4-2 spacing first popularised by Arrigo Sacchi, where horizontal and vertical compactness is achieved by players being in lines that are close together. Sweepers don't fit that system, but they can also cause disruptions to these lines. And some three at the backsides also inevitably shift to defend in more of a 4-4-2 block. Sheffield United under Chris Wilder would often pendulum across so that one wing-back dropped in while the other pushed up to the midfield line, with a wide centre-back filling in the full-back slot. This created a 4-4-2 shape that became a 3-5-2 in attack. Julian Nagelsmann's Hoffenheim used this approach too. Another key facet is that, perhaps La Liga aside, most top-level sides no longer field a traditional front two. 
This immediately means that a sweeper is redundant, especially against a conventional number 9 playing ahead of a number 10, or flanked by wingers or inside forwards ahead of a midfield 3. The spare defender is of more use in front of the defence, not behind it, especially with the changes in goalkeeping. This is why some aggressive three-man defences use their central defender to push up and attack the space in front of the line, not drop off to sweep behind it. A good example of this was Christian Romero at Atalanta last season. Teams now often attempt to achieve numerical superiority wide or in the half spaces too, making a sweeper, who generally plays centrally, out of position to help combat this. This is why Marcelo Bielsa combines his aggressive man-marking system with a free man. They are not positionally a sweeper, but whichever man is free and not marking one-on-one -on -one is able to patrol the space that's left, wherever that space may be. Now, it's worth noting too that a few outliers like Bielsa aside, most top coaches use zonal marking in their defensive third. Man orientation is usually reserved for pressing systems higher up the pitch. This means that even if a back three faces a front two, it's unlikely that the defenders will consistently go one-on-one, -on -one, leaving a spare who sweeps. Attackers and defenders are both now too versatile and mobile to be tied into this sort of system, unless it's part of an overall approach. The sweeper's time has probably been and gone, as a specific role, and that's why its demise is interesting. It charts a variety of ways in which football has developed. The technical and athletic attributes of defenders and keepers, changes in build-up, the increasing sophistication of both attacking and defensive systems, and changes in the laws of the game or their application. Most interestingly, we can still see flashes of the sweeper in modern football, but as with most other positions, it's now about situationally specific examples of a role spread among many players, rather than one position doing one thing. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do enjoy Tifo, then you'll probably also like The Athletic. If you watch our tactics videos, you should go and read Michael Cox. If you're into data, read Tom Warville. And if you're into transfers, it's David Ornstein. Plus, if you're a fan of any Premier League team, then there's a journalist dedicated to you, and you can try it for free for 30 days now by clicking the link in the description.